Up to this point, we've covered what does a PLC do for you, how does it replace the operator, um, what does the PLC do? And then we stepped aside and we went to input field devices, and then now we're going to do output field devices. Obviously, once the operator looks, then they're going to take action, usually with their hands. They're going to push a button or move something in the process. So let's look at output field devices. One of the goals of a digital output from a PLC is motion. And there's two forms of motion available, rotary and linear. Rotary motion is controlled by a motor starter. It's actually a relay with motor overloads. You apply three-phase power. When you energize the coil, current flows through the overloads and out T1, T2, T3 over to T1, T2, T3 on that three-phase motor. Linear motion to either hydraulic or pneumatic cylinders. This is a pneumatic cylinder. Uses a pneumatic solenoid valve. This valve has two solenoids on it, one on each end. And it electrically, by way of electromagnetic force shifts a spool inside of that valve body to control the direction of the cylinder. The symbols on prints for any coil, relay, starter, or otherwise is a circle with two lines. The solenoid symbol down below, even though that that solenoid is actually a coil of wire, is drawn with this symbol. Another goal of digital outputs from PLCs is indication, indicators. You see stack lights, panel lights, and then also sound, sirens, alarm buzzers, etc. Another digital output from a PLC is command signal. Instead of using a motor starter, you might use a variable frequency drive, which you can use to control the speed of an AC motor. And here's just a typical example of some of the connections on that drive. These are all digital input. One through eight are digital inputs. Four is a common. Digital input term block five, six, seven, and eight can be programmed to be whatever you want. So the PLC would send signals, close contacts, feeding 24 volts DC to these terminals to control the drive. You might also control a robot cell with signals from your PLC. I show five examples here of input inputs and you see that they're push buttons but they can be contacts from a, P from a PLC and robots are programmed and have their own program. A PLC can trigger individual motions, individual programs of the robot using a discrete output from the PLC to a discrete input like you see here for the robot. Controlling a three-phase motor, I showed it with a starter. This is a reversing starter, two starters and you have a three-phase power source connected at the bottom of those fuses there in the panel. When you energize one of these two coils, M1 or M2, that then closes the contacts down below that feed three-phase power to the motor. It's not shown there, but the difference between the three sets of contacts for M1 and M2 is one of the phases for M2 is reversed from that of M1. That's what makes it reverse. How do you control this? With two outputs from a PLC. Solenoid valves. I show two versions here, a dual solenoid valve and a single solenoid valve. The difference is the upper, you energize one solenoid for one direction of the cylinder, and then you energize the other solenoid for the other direction of the cylinder. And there's a variety of configurations for the spool inside of the valve. Some of these, it only takes a pulse on one solenoid that shifts it and the cylinder to that position, but you don't leave it energized. Then you pulse the other solenoid to get it to go back into the other direction. The single solenoid that you see below will be spring-loaded. When you energize it, the cylinder will extend. When you de-energize it, it retracts or vice versa. Here we have a cylinder and I show a couple of sensors on the cylinders. With all cylinders, you can mount sensors that are inputs back to the PLC to say what position it's in. And you see a power LED and a status LED. For the retracted position, you've got power and the status shows it's retract. That would be an input back to the PLC. The bottom one shows that it's inactive or it's not extended. If we extend the cylinder, push the rod out, now the status LEDs change. You see the retracted status LED is now extinguished and the status LED for extended is illuminated. 
These are also inputs back to your PLC from these sensors. So a solenoid valve, you have two solenoids and you have an air valve and the solenoids control what position that spool is in. This is another type of valve. These are process valves and they're either motor driven or air driven and they actually have sensors on them to tell you to feed back to the PLC if the valve is open or closed. For other devices, these are relays. They're not motor starters. They're just straight contactors and at the top of each one you see that where the power is applied through an output from a PLC and then these four large sets of contacts can be used to control electrical devices that require a lot of power like heaters, high power lighting, etc. If you look close under the screw terminals you see some little symbols that look like normally open contacts. That indicates that this four set of contacts on this particular relay are all normally open. Okay, output fill devices. Now by now everybody has a firm understanding of what does a PLC do? And we've replaced the operator's uh, senses, so to speak, with some sensors, field, input field devices, and their hands, output field devices. Next up, we're going to talk about the hardware because we've got some inputs devices and we've got some output devices, so let's connect it up to some hardware. 